In the past, we used to look at programming as something that only boring people did. There are all these stereotypes like programmers are nerds, programmers are mostly men, they have no interaction with the outside world. Okay, that last bit's probably true. But you can't help but notice how things have changed over the past 10 years. More women are now choosing software development. It doesn't matter if you call them nerds now because they get to work in environments that look like this. And programming is now becoming popular as a mind sport, like chess. Which is actually pretty cool considering that some of us chose programming because we realized we suck at any actual sport. Programming as a sport is called competitive programming. You can get started by registering in one of these websites. Each of these have their own way of conducting competitions. But what they have in common is that you have to write code to solve a bunch of problems. Your code needs to have the expected efficiency. Efficiency is expected in terms of how fast your code runs and how little memory that your code uses. And you'll need to solve these problems before other competing programmers. And there's a timer. For writing code, there's a wide range of programming languages for you to choose from. But if you choose anything other than C++, Python, or Java, you're going to have a hard time. These websites can be different in terms of how often they conduct competitions. Sometimes there are competitions without a timer. For example, Codechef has its monthly long challenges, which last for days. For others, there's a timer. When the timer starts, you will have access to the problems for that particular contest. And right away, you'll start to feel a rush of adrenaline because now it's a race to the finish line. The problem often contains three sections. It's important to understand how to navigate these sections and practicing to do this fast is critical to how you would perform in these competitions. So let's take a look at each one of them. One, problem statement. Read this part carefully to understand what code you're expected to write. This part will cover what kind of input your program will receive and what kind of output your program should generate. Depending on the platform, sometimes you have to write code to read input from the standard input like this and you're expected to output your result to the standard output space. Code forces, Google competitions are examples of this kind. Sometimes you'll be provided a function with input as parameters and you just need to fill in the function and return the expected output like this. Platforms like TopCoder, LeetCode, HackerRank, and many others will let you do this. For example, let's take the two-sum problem from LeetCode. Given an array of integers, nums, and an integer target, return indices of two numbers such that they add up to get the target. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution, and you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order. Here, the problem statement explains how the input looks like and the output that the code needs to generate. Two, sample input and output. If you still couldn't understand the problem after reading the problem statement, sample input and their corresponding output will give you a better idea. Most of these platforms also give you an explanation on why a particular input gave its corresponding output as well. For example, you may get a sample input and output like this. The nums are a is 2, 7, 11, 15, and the target is 9, and the output is 0, 1. The reason is that the 0th element and the first element, which is 2 and 7, adds up to our target 9, because 2 plus 7 equals 9. Input is often referred to as a test case. If your program generates correct output for a particular input, we say that the program passed that particular test case. Number 3. Constraints. So far you have understood you only need to write code to generate the output based on the input. But there's more to it than that. Once you submit your code, your code needs to work for a number of test cases and it needs to do that in a specific time limit and within a memory limit. There is a section called constraints that look like this. Here it is saying that the length of the array will be at most 10 raised to 9 and at least 2. This is a good point to think about how to solve this two-sum problem. So you have an array of numbers. Let n be the number of elements in the array. You need to identify a pair of these numbers that add up to the number target. Let's try a naive solution. For each number, we check that each of the other numbers as a pair. If you find a pair that sums to target, that's our answer. In the worst case, this means we make n minus 1 operations for each numbers. And we do this for n numbers. That's n raised to 2 operations. We know the length of the array is at most 10 raised to 9. So in the worst case, we have 10 raised to 18 operations. And that's pretty slow. Can we do better? Let's try. 
What if we go through each of the n numbers and try to find the difference between the target and the current number? We'll maintain this difference in a hash map with the difference as the key and the current index as the value. In the same iteration, we can check if the current value exists in the hash map. If it does, it means that the current index and the index found from the map are the pair that we need to return as the answer. This algorithm takes at most n operations in the worst case, which is actually pretty fast. You can imagine how the constraints are so critical in choosing the right algorithm for the problem. If the constraint said that the length of the array could be at most 10 raised to 3, it was actually enough to use our initial naive solution that takes n raised to 2 operations because it meant that it will ultimately lead to 10 raised to 6 operations at most. To me, it's important for every programmer to try participating in programming competitions at least once. It's difficult to explain the adrenaline rush and how it feels to get an accepted solution during a contest. Every single competition is like that potato chips seen from death note looks boring from the outside but internally you're dealing with intense thought process and fast decision making and nothing beats the high that it gets you in i hope you enjoyed this video if you did let me know in the comments and please consider subscribing see you soon